Invisible Soldiers podcast. Welcome to the Invisible Soldiers podcast. Happy New Year. I'm Rebecca. I'm Corey. And welcome to season two. Today we're talking to one of the hottest, youngest directors in the commercial world. He's done imaginative work for brands like Toyota, Gatorade, Nike, Under Armour, and his latest commercial for Audi will be featured in the upcoming Super Bowl. Wes Walker, welcome to the pod. Yeah, welcome, Wes. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. So how you been, man? Good, good. Just got to London, been out here, just been working really, really hard. Um, you and I work together on the Toyota campaign. It's about to drop in a few days. Yeah. I'm excited yeah, about yeah, that yeah. one. So we got a crazy yeah. Toyota campaign coming out. And um, that's going to make waves. And then Audi comes out right after that, too. So it's just been a lot of work, a lot of work in cars recently, too. So I'm like, let's let's go. I'm learning the game. So Cool, yeah. cool, cool. And so what's the opportunity that is bringing you to London? Where, 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 where are you out there? Okay, so I'm I'm based I'm based in Maui um, full time, and I just uh, moved out to London as well. So I'm going to be splitting time between the two. And so London is I, I got signed to Iconoclast out here in London, production company, and then I got signed to the big build BWGT BLD out in Germany and um, Berlin. And so uh, to me, I was like, that was that was a dream because I was like, listen, I gotta I gotta be able to flow in all the different types and styles of cinema. You know, I feel like there's there's a different vibe. Like in America, like our advertising is generally very very product centered you know in europe it's very people centered you know mm-hmm. so there's for us like our style is um it's epic it's bold a lot of, a lot of times it's montage you know um and if we don't go that route then generally we'll go towards comedy or celebrity right And we do a lot of that in america because it's just like get to the point people are distracted help them wake up a little bit and see this thing and really desire it and over here in, in europe it's a little bit different that they're like we have to show the sensitive moments of life, you know, the embrace of the mom and the child before you sell the toilet paper, you know, before right, you sell the right. baby food or whatever. So it's just a slower pace. It feels more more like narrative cinema. So it's just a different style. It's not better. It's just different. And so I was like, I got to gotcha. be over here. And I'm also working in Mexico, too, in Mexico City. And that down there is it's very, like, naturalistic. It's very, um, it's kind of a mix. It's a lot of VFX. It's very, very bold you know, um, and very, very like emotional, like they pull the heartstrings a lot, you know, because it's there's different vibes to each of the countries and each of the markets and how they like to be advertised to. So right now I'm just growing and learning how to reach people in different parts of the world with a different style, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Um, let's let's take it all the way back. Can you give us talk about your background and where you grew up and all of that good stuff? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I grew up uh, in El Paso, Texas. So was born in Durango, Mexico and half Mexican, half black. My dad and mom met in El Paso. My dad's from DC. And ultimately um, we'd spend every summer down in Mexico, you know, with my mom's family. Mom is one of 13. So huge family, you know, so the best food, you know, lots of love everywhere, you know, grew up speaking Spanish, writing Spanish. I direct in Spanish down in Mexico and then every, everything. I just love it. It's, it's, it's both sides and integrating the two sides, though, was was something that has just been like just a lifelong journey because it's like, you know, you go into certain communities, you're like never black enough for black folks, never Mexican enough for Mexican folks. And me and my sisters are like, what does it mean? Who are we? <laughs> so we're just like, listen, we're us and we're just going to roll with it and just give love, you know, and it's just led to this just this 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 beautiful just like you know community of just people and and um my family is just amazing and so yeah that was that was growing up i ended up going to stanford university after that i studied psychology and neuroscience and then after that i graduated and went to work at a company called tube mogul and it's an ad tech company um because i mean after school was done i was like listen like what am i going to do now you know it's either phd or it's work and i was like listen i need to get myself going in the world you know and um and yeah, so that company, we eventually got bought out by Adobe and I was a marketing manager at that company. And that's where I learned. So I, I began really this whole, you know, work in film from the client side, not not from the director art side. You know, so I was working on projects. I was managing, you know, videos. I was shooting small videos, you know, and I learned at that point, that's when I started studying cinematography, you know. And so from there, I was like, let me learn. I was just, I would, I would just get on Vimeo and would just be moved by just how these films were making me feel. I'd get like chills on my arms. I was like, what is this? <laughs> What's happening here? Like how, how yeah. you know, I watch movies and just, I wanted to know, you know, what's the construction of that feeling? How do you adjust that feeling? Like, and that, that's where the psychology came into it as well. It's like, how do we, you know, how, how do we target a specific emotion in our audience and 
generated an 80 to 90 percent of the viewership with high accuracy mm-hmm. like that's that's a task you know and it's like that that to me was kind of how i wanted to approach filmmaking is like there's there's two sides there's like the art and then there's the science of it and the science pertains really well to the business of it because sometimes what happens with us as directors is like we're like we're artists and it's like that's cool but this is a commercial <laughs> you know there's a task at hand you know there are things to be done and so there's commercial art and you got to learn how to flow in between the two so a lot of i feel like my whole life's been kind of building up to this in the weirdest way I've lived many different like lives, you know, different things I've done, travels and just things I've explored. But now that I'm like directing, I'm like, oh, it's coming together in one place. You know, that's a long journey. But yeah, that's how I got here. I love the idea that you said how it's all coming to one place. As I was preparing to speak with you today, I did just like a little bit of digging around the role of a director and really being the person that, to be honest with you, it's done when you say it's done. So in all of the things that you've talked about in terms of your education, even a marketing manager and being able to run a project and then you get your hands on film and it becomes, you know, this beautiful creative thing. Can you talk a little bit about when you were like director, that's what it is. Mm. Man, you know, it's, that's a good question. I I would say I, I started shooting a lot of landscape photography, just, just as meditation, just as a way to like, just be calm. I go out and sit in like beautiful natural spaces and would just sit there and like, look at that. And, and then I just, I started realizing, I was like, yeah, it's beautiful. Nature is wonderful. It's amazing. But the emotion that the the people, you want to be close to, to the human being. You want to be close to emotions that are powerful. You want to be able to tell stories that make us all kind of sit up and be like, wow, look at that. You know? And so I just started realizing, I was like, man, I got to learn to shoot. I got to learn to shoot, you know? And there was a, there were several projects um, that I was able to do. So through Stanford, I met um, Jadena and Jadena was connected to um, Wonderland, you know? And, and so he saw some of the projects I was doing through some mutual friends of mine, a friend of mine named Sam Pressman, another friend of mine named Jay Peter. And they connected me through to him and he was like, bro, like, what are you doing in tech? What, you got skills, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, do you want to come to South Africa? And I was like, yeah. So I ended up going to South Africa. It was supposed to be like a one month, job it turned into like almost three four months and we were down in south africa and then maybe a swaziland and i just had a camera and you know through jadena and his team and through wonderland i mean they helped fund me and get me down there and get the equipment and all of a sudden i was just in this whole other world and they're just and i was like i got there and i was like okay what are we shooting you know some music videos you know some of this that but they're like just follow your heart down here like shoot the beauty of black culture down here like really get to know what this place is so they're like follow sports follow cars follow spiritual healers like follow different cultures follow dance like all the things that make us us you know as people of color they're like follow that and shoot that from your heart and then just come back every day figure it out and so for form i just met all these film homies down there in Joburg, and we just went to different townships and and just all over the place and just shot incredible footage you know and that was the beginning where i was like when i would be there setting up these scenes you know and then all of a sudden i, I just thought of myself as a cinematographer i, said, I don't want to direct i just want to be i just want to be with the camera you know i just want to shoot so um and then all of a sudden I would be in front of the scenes and I would just like begin to adjust them and like could feel the, the people that I was working with. And I was just like, this is dope. Just the co-creation of it, really. It's like a lot of people think directing is one directional. It's not. You vibe, you know, and that vibe is what allows you to, you know, kind of find just, I guess, for lack of a better word, the light, you know, the way I, the way I really see it is like, it's, it's, it's like you're, you're a vessel, right? Like I feel like the energy of the universe through God is moving through you and your work is the shadow. It's like wherever, wherever it is that you're at mentally, spiritually, it comes out and the people in front of the camera feel it and wherever they're at, they feel it too. And you just get this whole vibe, it's a little metaphysical, but that, that's what I feel is going on. You know? So when I see the camera and I see what we're doing in it, I'm like, this is beautiful, you know? And after that, I just fell in love. I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I am supposed to visualize, you know, the beauty of us as people of color. I'm supposed to visualize the beauty of really clear concepts that are not fully understood, you know, like love, you know, like peace, like things that are good in the world, right? I feel like that's a lot of what my mission is in in cinema is to really uplift and inspire and just show these like epic, beautiful, you know, moments in life. So it's been a journey, but I'm on it. I'm like, let's go. So, so with, so with um, advertising specifically, you know, mm-hmm. um, we always talk about the barriers to getting in, right? It, it's, it's not, <laughs> you it's not like there's a system that just allows people to get in per se, um, especially people right. of color. 
Um, so I'm wondering, you know, were there any the same way you kind of got put on in a sense um, to directing? What about the advertising aspect? Were there any invisible soldiers that that opened that door or gave you that advice to find your way in? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think I think one of the strongest allies I've ever you know felt to you know I would say call even the, the just the plight of us as people of color and breaking in are are who's going through the same thing in advertising women women are going through the same thing as well too like they have a really difficult time you know getting their work seen being appreciated being mo moving moving forward in the industry you know having the gates open to them like there's a lot of gatekeeping in our industry and i think you know that that led to i just the, the first people that really supported my work for example is like what well, you know black lives matter hit and a lot of production companies hit me up like, you know, I'd been doing some music videos with Jaden and stuff and they were like, hey, you know, black squares were going up on Instagram and all this stuff. And everyone's, you know, so scared of being called racist, you know, that they were like, I'm, I love black people. I'm like, where you been? What a time. What a time. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I was just like, OK, you know, so a lot of companies reached out and I just kindly said to all of them, I said, thank you for reaching out. I really do appreciate it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the best that I can with this opportunity. But I said, let's try a job together before we uh before we, uh, you know, formalize this into something else. Cause I don't want to just sit on your roster and not work. Cause you are feeling bad about not having black people on your roster. And they were like, well, that's interesting. And then I just watched how none of them could bring job. <laughs> wow. And then the few that did, some of them were like, not very good jobs. And the one that really reached out with the most clarity, the most kindness, the most awareness, the most consciousness that really understood what my work was, was a woman named Nancy Hacklin. And she's uh, she's the managing director at Tool North America. And she was like, listen, I've got this crazy job. You know, it's got you written all over. It. It's with Bubba Wallace, who at the time was dealing with this whole racist issue. They found a noose in his garage, in his you know garage. He was, he's the only black driver in NASCAR. And um, and then Donald Trump tweets back at him. He's like, you put that noose in your own garage, boy. And all this happened. And then all the drivers were just like, and so it was somebody within the NASCAR world, you know, that did that. And the reason was he got on an interview and they asked him, do you agree with the Confederate flag being banned? He was like, yeah, it should be banned. So they banned the Confederate flag from NASCAR events. NASCAR is super racist. And then all of a sudden, all these people got really upset, you know, and so That's he crazy. had threats on his life. He get booed when he come out. And so they were like, so Nancy was like, listen, this is going down. We're in the height of Black Lives Matter what do you have to say about it? And would you be willing to write and direct and build this commercial? You know, it's basically you and Bubba and it's a portrait of his inner experience of what this has been. And I was like, yes, like cars, you know, riding for the culture, you know, a top athlete, you know, in, in the world, you know, and um, Michael Jordan at that point came in, bought the team. So now Michael Jordan was involved as well too. And I'm just like, this is the kind of, care and reverence for my career that i'd always hope for you know what i mean and that's what you look for in people when they're like kind of studying work like oh nice work you know it's like yeah but do you care about me do you do you see my heart do you know where i'm really going do you know what i'm really here to do you know do you know my purpose you know and um and i felt like nancy was one of those and then along with nancy i met a woman named laura mccauley um who was our ep at tool as well and she's ride or die she's become a very good friend of mine and um she also was the same and um then i also through a nike job met an incredible producer named Tay Haas and Tay's from Atlanta. Dope, dope, dope black line producer. And I was, that was my first time ever having a black line producer and just my shoot experience was so much better. <laughs> can you, <laughs> you know? to cut you off, but can you tell our audience what the difference is between a producer and a line producer? Yes, sure. So um, EPs and producers um, that exist within companies itself, like manage the, the jobs that come in. They work with the client quite a bit. The line producer does the nuts and bolts of all the details of making the shoot come alive. So making sure that the crew is staffed, making sure that, you know, um, the vision is like fully executed and all everything. They have a whole team underneath them as well, too. But they they're, they're, they are the machine of film. Yeah. Do you see a lot of people of color in that position? No, no, no. No. Do you see a lot of people <laughs> of color in, 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 in any of the positions on our sets? No, man, definitely not. Unfortunately, no. And it's, um, it's slowly changing, you know, there was some momentum, but you know, there's like, like I always talk about, there's a lot of, I'm going to call it just performative action. There's a lot of virtue signaling, the sense of like, I'm good, you know, we're diverse. And it's like, but where are we at? You know, and you go to sets and you see that, you know, and so at the beginning of my career, I said, listen, I want to make sure that half my sets 
are women. I want to make sure at least 30% of my sets are black. You know, I want my sets to re reflect the actual demographic of the place that we live in, you know? So it's just natural. I don't see it as like, oh, we're so great because we're diverse, you know? It's just how it should be. And the vibe is amazing. You know, you get to set and got music going. You got different people. Just, just people are free to be themselves, you know? And like, there's no... There's no friction, right? It's like, like Corey, like when we was on Toyota, like literally my favorite moment of that shoot was when we were doing this shot and there was some pushback, you know, on, on the client side or the agency side. And then you just came forward and just like, you just said, let him cook. Let Wes cook. <laughs> I was like, I've never had a black GCD before, but you understand what I'm doing. And you gave me the space to flow. And then all of a sudden people are like, wow, the shot's dope. And it's just that that kind of that kind of just shorthand of like we don't have to change how we talk we can be how we are like we are just ourselves and we're flowing and then all of a sudden there's a whole new level of swag that's brought to the work because we got a little just a little bit i don't need a ton of creative freedom i know what i know it's a commercial i know what a commercial is but just a little bit and with that little bit the commercial just takes another step up you know word word yeah. sounds like communication is huge right and being able to um be around people who understand you and speak the same language and, uh, and, and, and know the shorthands, if you will. It's true. I mean, I, I'd say communication is everything, everything, you know, and learning how to learning how to communicate too beyond just like, you know, people looking at me like the Afro Latino director or the black director. I'm like, I'm a director, you know, I get hired because of my skill, not because of my race or the color of my skin. You know, and that's that's what I, I want to constantly reframe those conversations towards, you know, like there's a really beautiful piece that was put out recently about, you know, this diverse director in the Super Bowl, this, that it's very important that we break all the doors down. But at the end of the day, it's our skill that's coming in. It's not just it's not just who we are. Like, we got to be respected for the fact that we're just dope, you know, right. and word, um, and that's 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 where I want to get to with it. You know, people are like, yeah, same way we look at Spike. We're not like the black director, Spike Lee. We're like, it's Spike Lee. Like, yes, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting that you speak about like just one's technical ability and real skill and expertise in recruiting. What I found over the last 20 years, specifically in advertising is that like a portfolio or a book, by the way, your portfolio is supreme. <laughs> you know, you can get a tissue. Thank you. Right. A cry at quite a few of, of, uh, of your produced work, but a lot of the times my creative directors wouldn't even look at a book of someone they would that they didn't know. They literally like I find that it, it was usually at least at the highest level, like my ECDs, it's always their friends. And so and their friends are the ones that, you know, they go to this film festival. Then you find out that they all live in the same neighborhood. So when the job comes up, it's because of the network that they've built and their networks are not diverse or people of color. What do you recommend young people do to get experience and tools in their toolbox? Because being creative, yes, but also the level of expertise that both of you have are, are in skill and education and dedication and how, what, how, and how do you network in a space where you usually don't have access to so that you can get that experience? And it isn't just about, I've got a great eye or, you know, a good idea? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, the, the network, the network is everything. It, it really is. You know, I, I, I think first it's le leaning in on mentors. You know, I reach out to a lot of people. I ask for connections. Like, you know, now that, you know, I've been able to get into a production company, I ask for meetings to be set up. I ask to go to dinner with Serpy. I just, I, I ask to expand the network, you know, actively, you know, I think about who I might want to, to meet. I mean, so many of the people I collaborate with now, just even in like really like high and beautiful technical positions, like my colorists or my sound designers, a lot of those are actually just cold emails. You know, I just wrote to somebody just with my heart in my hand, like, I really, really vibe with this, 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 this in your work because of this. Like, it's not just like, love your work, bro. Like, I'm like very clear and specific about it. And, um, and then I just, I, I just give love. I just give love. And even if I don't get it back, I'm like, that's, that's your karma. This is more about you and it doesn't about me. You know, so sure. I just, you know, I, I, but I do think um, being intentional about where you want to go and who you want to talk to and finding if, if I can't even get through that person, I figure out who can help me get through them and we just make warm intros, but it's got to be warm. You know, I feel like the cold, the cold intros, 
work if you're genuine and you really really feel it you know but the, the warm intros are everything yeah and following up after the call after the first intros is important too because then the really also think you know you know they say a bad reputation follows you and i think a a good mm. reputation precedes you and the word gets out and it and, and when you walk in the room they're like oh that's the dude y'all talking about you know what i mean and when people find out that you're easy to work with and that you um you're collaborative you know, it makes a lot more people want to work with you than when they hear the opposite. So, you know, and I can I can attest to, um, you know, uh, Wes is probably, you know, one of the most collaborative. Like he's like, I want the ideas. He's like, give me what you're thinking. Like, you know, which is like I came in at a time when it was old school directors who were like, stay away from me, <laughs> literally on step, <laughs> you know, and a couple of them might like you and be like, OK. Maybe like you, but not your partner gets to come over here, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So to like fast forward to now where, you know, you got a director saying like, yeah, let me hear everything. I want to know everything you're thinking. Like, it's like, whoa. OK, so. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I think that word is going to get out. And I think that, you know, you're going to continue to get uh, good, good opportunities because uh, the work is speaking for itself. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's it's so true. I mean, it's like with, with reputation, too. It's like you just get that feeling. It's with like people. I think about it, too. My friend told me the other day, he's like, he calls it balloons and anchors. And I was like, what do you mean? It's like if you mm. think of somebody, or if, the, if you see somebody come up on your phone or you see somebody's name, does your energy elevate like a balloon mm -hmm. when you feel it? Or does it kind of sink like a Damn. thing? Like, oh, not, not him, you know? And I just, and he's just Damn. like, just note, the, note the energetic signature of anyone. And then just, yeah. just note it to yourself. And I was like, yeah, I love that. I love that he's yeah, that. that's I mean, real. I'm I'm starting to follow that with jobs. I'm starting to follow that and how I even want to move through the through the through the industry. It's like some of these people, I respect where they're at in the industry, but they're not they're not balloons to me. They're anchors. Like I could I just even right. thinking of how they move in some of their work. Like I respect who you are, but I don't vibe. You know, so wow. I just I want wow, I want to wow. find my people. I'm trying to find my tribe as I move forward, and I want everybody to come together and grow, you know, my, I mean, cause like, I really believe that like the great idea can come from anywhere. And if you're not listening and people don't feel like they can really speak it, then like literally opportunities are gone. Like the fullest potential of the crew is not maximized. You know? So, so let me ask you this, uh, of, of all the platforms out there as a director, you know, you got music videos, you said you, 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 you shot some of those, you know, you got TV, you got long form movie scripts and everything. What is it uniquely about advertising? that turns you on and excites you? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I mean, advertising is, is propaganda, really. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's what it is, you know, and we're highly, highly trained propagandists. That's, that's what we're trained to do. We're trained to incite a need or a desire in a person or a mind that did not previously have it. And so you got to literally break through the mind, you got to break through the ego, you got to get all the way into the subconscious, and you got to do it in no time at all, if you really want to affect change, right? I mean, there's eating three meals a day was an advertising campaign, right? That's not, right. these are, you know, like, picking up trash, uh, uh, two car family, stop dr dr uh, ending drunk driving, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you can you you can literally shape society through this. And this is where I, I wish and I hope like, the work that we're able to do, you know, in advertising can kind of get back towards it's this it's this wittier more thoughtful more like what are we doing on a systems level of thinking when it comes to society's behavior because we got real problems coming up we got the world burning climate change is happening we got wars going on everywhere we got marginalized people being destroyed like there's a lot of pain in the world right and to me i'm like if we are the group of people in the world just the most brilliant most interesting thoughtful minds that are able to use this medium which has become the voice of the world which is video everybody watches video now this is how we communicate as human beings now we got headsets that are about to go on our eyes to immerse us in even more video so i'm like if that's our task and we are the ones that make the best quality videos in the world for targeted purposes that get tested and checked to make sure we did our job right i said we got a lot of responsibility you know and that's why i'm not running i will never run from advertising i'm always going to do some crazy ass ads because i'm like this is it's special you can really move people and you also get the work in front of people. Yeah. So I love that challenge.
What are you currently, out of all the things that you've created over the last maybe five years or so, what are the things that have stood out to you the most and that you continue to go back to for your own inspiration? Oh, man. I mean, still even that Bubba Wallace piece, it's, it was my first commercial ever. You know, and when it came out, people were like, how's this your first commercial? You know, a lot of people were like, how have you only been doing commercials for three years? You know, um, I just say, I just say, give, gift came from God and I'm grateful. And I just, I hustle like crazy. I work, I'm meticulous about my craft. Um, I'm a craftsman, you know, and I know that I'm just, just learn little by little. But I would say that, that film changed me because it was the first time I was able to see something just, just my mind like on the screen itself. And it's, there's this moment at the very end, you know, when the reporter comes up, you know, to Bubba and he's like, you know, what are you going to, you know, tell us what you're going to, you know, are you, are you going to apologize? Basically, I like, apologize for putting the noose in your own garage and all this kind of stuff. He's like, will you apologize for the racism that's coming against you? Is basically what they're asking. And that's how heavy the question was. And he just looks at him and then just looks away and just keeps walking. And then that, that feeling, that's, that's how I feel relative to like the industry, relative to all these things. It's like, I, I see you, I hear you. We're not even, that's a no comment. <laughs> I'm not resonating at that level. You know, that's not what we're going to, what we're going to be. And so that's just reminding me, I watch it sometimes and I just sit back and I'm like, yeah, you go up against these things. You can handle it. Rise above, rise above, just keep going, you know, and then bring everybody that you can with you. So we all just get more and more opportunities together. Like, you know, and that's, that's how I see it. I love it. I love how it's like you are sh shaping and changing the narrative a bit. So like moving into the spirit of, of progress for people of color, but also acutely aware of what's actually happening to us as we are marginalized. And so we know that you have a mentorship program and you bring interns on the set. Mind sharing a bit about how you are connected and what that does to the to the whole spirit of the of the set. Yeah, yeah. I think to me, that's become one of the most important things. And I started doing it just, it, it was just an idea that came to me because I was like, I want to be able to like, for the longest time when I was first starting, you know, there was even some friends of mine that have done big, big commercials, you know, but they came in early at early in the game back when I was still shooting landscape photos. And I was like, what is film? Why does it make me feel? And I would write to them like, yo, um, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? And they're like, look it up on YouTube. <laughs> I was just like, Oh. word <laughs> gotcha <laughs> you know word i got you no problem um and i just said to myself i said i will never be that person i said i'm gonna go to the top and i said if somebody reaches out to me i'm gonna be like yo come here what are you working on show me your real let's talk what do you need what connections do you need you know because like i just i really believe in that in that karma that energy like you give that energy it comes back you know and um and so yeah i just started this this program where i bring on mentees mm -hmm. of color and i just put out a post on instagram for major shoots and i'm like listen we're looking for one or two or generally i do one per day or sometimes i do one for like the whole shoot day sometimes and i just like just come through the set learn everything we're going to introduce you to everyone agency partners everyone's going to meet you and then you're going to learn just about every part of the set that you're interested in you know and generally um i i focused it on directors that are already very successful you know that are already on their way you know so that way it's actually useful it's less so like it's not so much for film students but i have brought some film students on as well but it's more to say, like, here's the treatments, here's the documents, here's how we actually build and construct this level of work. Here's how much thought is put into it. And I show them all of it. I send it to them. Of course, it's private, you know, um, get them paid as well, too, if the production company can. If not, then even personally, I will, because everyone's time is valuable. You know, they could be working on something else. Instead, they're on my set learning, you know. So I'm just like, it's just that. It's just give what I really wish I could have received and then do it in a way that's useful and then I'd yeah, be following up with them you know we go and when I'm in the city I will go and have lunch and talk and just be like listen where are you at where, what you know and a lot of them are doing super well you know and just like you know and then I also they'll tell me too they're like when my tv show's popping on Netflix best believe I'm gonna ask you to direct an episode and I'm like that's exactly it and I say pass it forward just pass it forward do it to somebody else you know and then it's like it's this whole little thing that's happening you know so it's just a quiet it's just a quiet part of my heart that I feel is like I just want to keep giving, you know, and, um, and, it, and it's helping and it's, it's just, it's real connections down. These, they become friends, which is dope. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, so like kudos to you for kicking that off. Um, when you're the end, uh, I, you know, I, I guess my last question is just, you know, given your, 
black and Mexican background, obviously you get reached out to from, you know, both targeted agencies, you know, on both sides. But then in the middle, you got this huge landscape of the total market. Um, and I just want to talk about, you know, how are you received there? Um, what do you think you have to offer, um, you know, them um, specifically, um, especially when it comes to just getting, you know, being cooler, more tapped in, more culturally diverse? Hmm. Like, I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding, like, how, how I tap into the general market so you know how like how we, we 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 reached out to you from like more of a aa perspective right and then you exactly. have agencies yeah, yeah. reaching out from from the hispanic side but like yes for all of that landscape in between that total market right like you know what are the selling points to them about what you bring to the table mm, mm -hmm. um i i i think it's it's the way i like to look at it is that it that it'd be the same you know, it'd be the same whether it's a segmented market that's aimed at a very specific, diverse population. So like my Audi Super Bowl spot was aimed directly at the Hispanic Latino population. Right. And that's and the spot is in Spanish as well, too. You know, and it's running on Univision. Um, and the same approach that I give to that is the same thing that I did, you know, on Toyota for the African-American community. But it's also the same approach that I do to the general market, which is just great work, just meticulous, thoughtful, you know collaborative just really on point work you know that comes from a place of understanding the product you know what you know for example on audi um you know and on, i just went to the dealership i flew to honolulu i live in maui i flew to honolulu went to the dealership had the salesman take me around the cars and i just thought i'm buying a car today i mean i wasn't but i was like i'm buying a car today you know and, I, and he taught me all the features of the car you know he's like take take the keys go drive it you know i drove all the cars and I understood what these products are. So, you know, so when I got on the next car, I was like, this car, this, the story is a little off for this car. This thing could be adjusted. I took my phone mm -hmm. and I shot all the different shots ahead of time. I just moved the, car, the camera through the car. And all of a sudden I'm like, here's kind of what your ad might look like. It's janky, it's my iPhone, but like, kind of like that. And they're like, hmm? <laughs> so it's, it's, just, it's just that, it's just that sense of like, just caring, really caring about the craft. Cause it's like, you know, if, if content's getting shorter and shorter and smaller and smaller, we used to be asked to do two minute spots and sixties were like the thing. And it's like, maybe give me a 45. Now it's all the asks are, you know, Google asked me to do 10, six second ads for the, you know, the FIFA world cup. And I'm like, I flew to London. That's how the first time I ever came to London, I flew here and they had me in London for 21 days shooting six second ads. And I was like, okay, this is the future. This is where we're at. And so you guys, I'll yeah. do them. I'll do them well. But now, now that the content's getting shorter, the value of the communication is greater. So we have to be more intentional, yeah. more thoughtful with every single second of screen time on film. And it's almost harder than thinking about the sprawling like landscape of a feature. You know, it's like, that's amazing. That's a different world, but this is amazing. So I'm just trying to make sure that like people see me as just as a consummate full person, right? Not that's our black dude that's going to direct some because we need a black dude to direct some, you know, it's like, yeah, no. You know, like I'm just dope and I'm, I'm grateful that God has given me this gift and I'm just trying to really keep moving in that direction, you know, and just make great work, you know? Yeah. Well, Wes, we appreciate having you. Um, any shout outs, any, any, um, do you want to give us uh, places people can follow you? Any of that good stuff? Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram. Um, website is there as well. And um, yeah, just please hit me up. You know, I'm around, you know, so thank you guys again for having me on the show and, just for writing for the culture. I love what you guys are doing. And that's why I asked to, I was like, Corey, we got to do this. So thank you guys. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. This was great. Yeah. Really love thank it. Thank you. And thanks everybody out there for tuning in to another episode of the Invisible Soldiers podcast. Do us a favor. Um, follow us on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Peace. Peace. Peace.